Hello friends, today let's solve the escape a larger maze problem. We are given a 1 million by 1 million grid. The coordinates of each grid square are x, y, and the x, y is greater or equal than 0, and it's less than 10 to the power of 6. And we are given a source position and a target position. Also, there are some positions are blocked. We will find whether we have a pulse from source to target. This problem seems very familiar because we have solved a normal maze problem. Like we already know the number of the rows and the number of columns and they are relatively small. So we can try every position to see whether there is a pass from source to target. And if we do a normal BFS or DFS, we know the time complexity should be big O n times n, m times n, uh, if we mark every VT the position. But if we do the same algorithm, we will find it will cause time limited exceeded. Because in the larger maze, the number of the rows and the number of columns is 10 to the power of 6. So we should uh, do some optimization. Let's see, there is an important information in this question. That is, the blocked length is less or equal than uh, 200. That means at most there are 200 blocked position. So once the source uh, position to the current position is, uh, I mean the Manhattan distance between the source position to the current position is greater than 200. We should know there is always a path from source to target. Uh, what does that mean? So as there is at most 200 uh, blocked position, if we can reach the current position uh, um, by more than 200 moves, uh, that means there, uh, we can, we can, like we can go out uh, the source to the current position. That means we can go to uh, everything else but this is not efficient. That just means we can go from source to the current position. That does not mean we can go from target to the current position. So we should do something the same, except we exchange the position of the source and the target. That means we know, uh, not only check whether we can go from source to the current position, we will also check whether we can go from target to current position. So that means we will do, do two DFS and exchange the source position, target position. This is one thing we should notice. And uh, um, uh, I think the check the Manhattan distance is very important. Uh, and uh, that make sure that we can and the DFS quickly. Mm, I think that is, uh, that's it. And we also need to mark all the VT the position. So wrap up, we do a normal DFS and we mark every VT the position. In this case, we will not use a 2D array because the index is very big and if we use a array, we will waste a lot of space. So we will just use a hash set and we mark the position. At, we represent the position as a string. And once the Manhattan distance between the source and the current position is greater than 200, we return true. And we then go from target to source if in both cases we can uh, return true, that means we can find a way.
Otherwise, we cannot find a path go from source to target. So we return false. Okay, let's write the code. So the first thing we will always use the directions and it's very common when we solve the graph problem in a 2D array. So you should be very familiar about these four directions. That means, uh, that means go right. That means keep the row index same and the, the column index um, decrement by one. That means go left. And that means go down. That means go up. Then we should uh, represent the blocked position hash set. So for every position in the blocked, we block add a p0 plus. You can do whatever to represent this position. I will use a arrow. You know, um, and the p1. Okay, now we have the blocked uh, string. Then we will return DFS. DFS, we do twice. The first thing we will go from source to target, and the current position is source and the block. And we need to mark the positions we visited. That will be target, source, target, block, new hash set. Okay, so now let's write the DFS. That will be source, target, current position, and uh, the that will be blocked, and uh, that will be also string beated. So what is the best case? Uh, one obvious best case is the current position equal to the target position, current one equal to target one. We know we reach the end, so return true. Otherwise, we know if the Manhattan distance between the source to the current plus ABS, that would be source one minus current one greater than 200, that means we can return true. And uh, we do not need, we do not forget to add the current uh, position to the weighted place. Then for every direction, we know the r equal to d0 plus curve 0, the c equal to d1 plus curve 1. And then we know the string will represent it as r plus plus c. So once we should make sure the index are valid, greater or equal than 0, and are less than 10 to the power of 6, and uh, c greater or equal than 0, and uh, c less than 2 to the power of 6. Okay, and uh, we should make sure the block do not contains the string and uh, the that means weighted do not contains string. Okay. Mm. Mm. And uh, once we find a path, we know we can reach the end. So we can return to target and curve. There should be new RC and the block weighted. True, we return true. Once we find one parse, we return true. Otherwise, we return false.
Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.